Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another weekly WW meal prep. I'm gonna be showing you all of my meals that I'm preparing for this upcoming week. We have breakfast, we have lunch, and we have a one smart point chocolate chip cookie. So I'm gonna be showing you those things as well as what I have planned for snacks throughout the week. So if you wanna see everything that is on my meal prep for this upcoming week, just keep watching. For breakfast this week, I'm gonna be making a breakfast pita. I'm super excited about this. I bought these pita breads and I've been wanting to do something for breakfast. So I'm gonna make myself up a breakfast pita. So let me show you what I'm gonna be putting in to my pitas. So first I'm gonna be using some of the Jimmy Dean turkey sausage crumbles. You can really use whatever protein you want, but I really like these. They're low points, they're filling. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that as my protein. For spices, I'm gonna add some Himalayan pink salt, some minced onion. I'm gonna use some of this Dax green zest. This spice is amazing. Dax is all sodium free, but the flavor is on point. The flavor is so good in these spices. Dax does have a 10% discount for you guys. I will put that here on the screen and link that down in the description box below but the green zest is amazing on eggs, so I'm gonna season up my eggs with that. And then of course, some ground black pepper. I'm gonna have some eggs, of course. I'm gonna go ahead and use the Trader Joe's light shredded mozzarella. I have a couple extra halves of peppers and a zucchini left, so I'm gonna chop those up and saute those and add that to the scrambled egg mixture. And then I'm going to be using the Joseph's pita breads as the bread for my breakfast pitas. So let's get started making up this week's breakfast. So the first thing that I need to get started is chopping up my veggies. So I have half of an orange pepper and half of a red pepper, and then I have a zucchini, and I'm just going to dice these up very finely. We'll get these first into the saute pan, get them nice and sauteed down, crispy, delicious, before we add in our egg mixture. So let's chop some veggies. Once you've chopped up your vegetables, go ahead and crack your eggs into your bowl. I did crack a total of 10 eggs, so two for each day. And then I'm just going to whisk in some spices. So first I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add some ground black pepper. And you can use whatever spices you want and however much as you want for your liking. But I like a lot of flavor in my eggs, so I have pepper. And then of course I'm gonna be adding in my Dax green zest, which is amazing so i'm going to go ahead and add that into my eggs and again this is a salt-free spice all of dax are they just have a really good flavor for having zero salt in them so i am going to go ahead and i am going to add a little bit of pink himalayan sea salt as well just because i like a little bit of saltiness and then lastly i am going to go ahead and i'm going to go ahead and add in some minced onion and then I will give this a whisk here with my fork. And I'm gonna get the vegetables sauteing first, get those nice and cooked down. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add the eggs and the sausage to the vegetables once they are entirely cooked down. So just make sure that you whisk your eggs together really good. I may add a little bit of almond milk or some non-fat Greek yogurt to my eggs just to get them a little bit more fluffy. And then I also did measure out one and a quarter cup of the Jimmy Dean turkey sausage crumbles. So that is going to be added as well. So let's get it a cooking. Next, we need to go ahead and get our pan warmed up. I am going to add some avocado oil spray or nonstick cooking spray to my pan. Once this gets warmed, we'll go ahead and add in our veggies. Once your pan gets nice and hot, go ahead and add in your vegetables, whatever ones you choose to put into your pitas. I'm gonna let these get nice and sauteed, about eight to 10 minutes. I want them to get nice and soft. 
and even develop that little bit of crunch, a little bit of brown to my veggies. And then we'll add in our eggs and our sausage. Once your veggies start to get all the way cooked down, browning, looking amazing, we are gonna go ahead and add in our Jimmy Dean turkey sausage crumbles. We're gonna let those cook down just a few minutes with our veggies before we add in our eggs. So two to three minutes or so just to warm the sausage through and just allow the veggies to cook just a little bit more. Once your veggies finish cooking and your meat is nice and warm, we're gonna go ahead and add in our egg mixture. I did decide to add a little bit of non-fat Greek yogurt. That's just a tip to get your eggs nice and fluffy. So we're gonna let these eggs cook through, scramble them up, and then we'll add them to a bowl and we'll get ready to assemble our pitas. Our egg and veggie mixture is done. This looks so good, so good. So here's the pitas that I'm using, the Joseph's. And then I've measured out one ounce of Trader Joe's light shredded mozzarella cheese got that right here. So I'll individually weigh out one ounce servings that will get added to the egg mixture and into the pita. So let's get these pita breakfast sandwiches put together. So the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and take your pita bread. We're gonna go ahead and slice this in half so that we can fill both sides of our pita. So go ahead, get it opened up, and then we're gonna go ahead and add in our egg mixture to each part of our pita. So scoop in, you wanna make sure that your egg mixture lasts all five pitas or however many you're making for the week. So I'm gonna go ahead and scoop some of the egg mixture into one half of my pita. Look at that, yum. And then to that, I'm gonna add half of my one ounce of Trader Joe's light shredded mozzarella cheese. And that is going to be one half of my breakfast pita. I'll put that into my meal prep container. I'll do the same thing and fill up the second half of my pita bread. You can always go back and add additional egg mixture if you have some left, left over after you filled all five or however many you're making pita breads. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do because I'm not sure exactly how much I'll need for each pita bread. But there you go, you've got a delicious breakfast pita. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of them made up and then I'll do my fruit and I'll show you what my completed breakfast is going to look like. So here are my completed breakfast for the week. I am super excited to have this it is such low point for all of this so let me show you what i'm having so i have one of the joseph's pita bread with some of the egg mixture that has the peppers the zucchini that is all zero points i am counting one smart point for the jimmy dean sausage crumbles one smart point for the pita and one smart point for the trader joe's light mozzarella so the breakfast pita is only three points for the entire pita three smart points. I did bag up some grapes here for zero, and then I decided that I'll go ahead and have a light and fit yogurt with my breakfast, and I'm gonna top it with about a tablespoon of the Julian Bakery Vanilla Cluster Pro Granola. Now, if you follow my channel, you know I eat this literally every day. I'm in love with the Pro Granola. I do have a discount code, I'll put that here on the screen for you, and down in the description box below. But with my code, you can get 10% off of your Julian Bakery order and free shipping. There's so many flavors of granola. This particular one is the vanilla cluster. There's vanilla cinnamon, espresso, peanut butter. So there's tons of flavors and they are all amazing. This particular granola is only two smart points for one half of a cup. That's it, you guys, two points for granola. I am only gonna put a tablespoon or so on my yogurt so it'll actually be zero additional smart points so if you haven't ordered the granola i highly highly recommend it use my discount code save 10 percent get free shipping and i promise you will not be disappointed in this granola it is the best on the market so i'm going to do some pro granola on top of my yogurt my breakfast pita and my grapes so my breakfast is going to be a total of only five smart points for all of this food.
For lunch this week, I'm gonna be having Korean ground turkey rice bowls. I am stoked for this. It sounds amazing. I am bulking up the original recipe with some veggies, so I will link any modifications that I made to the recipe down in the description box below. So here's what you need to make the Korean ground turkey rice bowls. Of course, you're going to need some rice, white rice, jasmine, whatever your preference is, some soy sauce, sesame oil, ginger, red pepper flakes, pepper, we're gonna garnish with sesame seeds and green onions. You're going to need some minced garlic, some honey. I'm gonna use the sugar-free honey substitute that I purchased in my nutrition.com haul. This is actually the first time I'm gonna be using this, so I'll let you guys know how it tastes. I'm gonna do 99% lean ground turkey, and then I'm bulking mine up with some classic coleslaw as well as some julienned carrots and a zucchini that I had left over in my fridge. So let's get started on our rice bowls. So the first thing that we need to do for the Korean rice bowls is we're gonna go ahead and brown our ground turkey. I did use a rather large pan because I am going to add the zucchini, the cabbage, and the carrots to the same pan and let those kind of saute down about halfway through cooking the ground turkey. So we'll get this cooked about halfway We'll add in our vegetables and I'll show you kind of what the finished product looks like. While our turkey is browning on the stove, we're gonna make our sauce for our bowls and we're just gonna set that aside. So the first thing that we need to do is go ahead and add in some minced garlic and we want about four cloves worth. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do just a heaping tablespoon of garlic into my bowl. To that, we are also going to be adding two teaspoons of sesame oil which is not very much, but it is going to add that really good, authentic flavor. We're also going to add just over a quarter cup of soy sauce. Their recipe makes four servings, and I'm actually making five to cover all five days of work for me. And then I'm also going to add in one quarter cup of the sugar-free honey mixture. Make sure if you do buy this sugar-free honey that you're extra careful because it is made with xylitol which is absolutely deadly to dogs. So I keep it on the highest shelf in my pantry to avoid my dogs getting a hold of it. I'm also going to be adding in some red pepper flakes. So just a few, just I want a little bit of heat, but not a lot. I'm not a big spicy food person, so I don't wanna overdo the spiciness. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and add in my ginger. I just use stir and paste. I find that it is much better than messing with the powder or even shredding or cutting up fresh ginger. And it is actually fresh ginger and there's nothing added to it, no oil or anything. And then lastly, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add just a little bit of ground black pepper and then our sauce is good to go. We'll give it a nice stir and then we'll just set this aside and have it ready to go once our veggies and our ground turkey cook down. But that looks amazing. Once your ground turkey is cooked most of the way through, we're gonna go ahead and add in our veggies. So first I'm gonna add in my cut up zucchini. And again, this is a modification that I made just to get all my veggies in. And then I'm also going to add some of this classic coleslaw mix, just enough to add that little extra bit of crunch to it. And then lastly, I'm gonna pop in some julienned carrots. Again, just to up my veggie game and add a little bit of crunch to the Korean rice. We'll give it a little bit more substance as well. So I'm gonna stir all this in. We're gonna let the rest of the meat cook down, get these veggies nice and softened. And in the meantime, I have my water boiling here to throw in my bags of rice. Once your ground turkey and your veggies get cooked through and your veggies are nice and softened, we are gonna go ahead and add in our delicious sauce that we made. We're just gonna pour that in. We're going to allow it to cook for another three to four minutes to give the opportunity to kind of soak in to all of the ground turkey and those vegetables, and then we'll be ready to assemble our bowl. Everything is nice and cooked. So here is our ground turkey veggies with the sauce. It smells so good in here. Sweet, salty, it smells amazing. I have my rice here with one half of a cup. I'm gonna be adding one half of a cup of rice to each of my bowls. 
I have my cut up green onion to top the rice bowls as well as some sesame seeds and I'll be putting all of that into my meal prep bowl. So essentially I am going to have one cup of rice so we'll go ahead and we'll add that kind of get that into the bottom of the bowl there and then we are going to go ahead and take our turkey and veggie mixture we just want to make sure that we're divvying out enough for five days so i'm going to start with two pretty good sized scoops so there is one of the korean rice bowls and i'm just going to repeat that four more times and then i'll add any additional leftover meat and veggies to the top and then we'll add our green onions and our sesame seeds. Here are our five Korean turkey rice bowls. These look so good, I'm super excited. So next I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add on my green onions. Now if you don't want your green onions heated up when you heat up your rice bowl, you can put them in a little baggie and set them aside if that's better. But I don't mind that they get heated up. Normally I would cook them down in the veggies anyways. I just wanted them to have a little bit more oniony taste and by keeping them raw, you definitely get that flavor of the onion a little bit more. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of green onion to the top of all of my bowls. And then lastly, I have my sesame seeds. So again, I'm just going to take those and kind of sprinkle them over the top. And there you have a Korean rice bowl. What is great about this, when you use 99% lean ground turkey, the only thing that you have to count points for in my bowl is the rice. And you have one half of a cup of rice and the honey substitute does have points. So this entire Korean turkey rice bowl is a total of five smart points. That's it five points. So I'm going to get the rest of my bowls put together and then I will show you the rest of what I'm going to take for lunch. So here's my completed lunches for the week. I have my five smart point Korean ground turkey bowl. I'm also going to have 23 of these crunch master brownie thins. This is the salted caramel. These are delicious. You can actually have 23 of them for two smart points or 32 of them for three smart points. And this is literally what they taste like, the crunchy brownie corners. That is not a lie. I do have these linked down in my description box below in my Amazon store, so check them out. This is what they look like. So this is 23 of the brownie thins. So see the size of them, pretty good size. This is a good amount of the little brownie thins for only two smart points. And they just cure that sweet tooth that you have but they are really good because they actually have a lot of protein in them. They're amazing. So I'm gonna go ahead and have two Smart Points worth of those, and then I'm going to finish out my cuties. I have enough for the week. So my entire lunch, including dessert, you guys, seven Smart Points. For desserts this week, and just to have a nice sweet treat on hand, I'm going to be making chocolate chip cookies. And these just aren't any chocolate chip cookie. They are packed with protein and they are only one smart point. One point per cookie and they are so good. So, so the first things that we need to do to get started on our cookies is we are going to be adding one cup of brown sugar. So this is that sucrin brown sugar blend and it is a total of zero smart points. So we're gonna add that. And then I did measure out 170 grams of I can't believe it's not butter. And that is about three quarters of a cup. If you need to know how many grams in say butter or a liquid, you can just Google how many grams in this and it'll pop up correctly for you. And here we are going to take our hand mixer and just mix this until nice and combine. You wanna make sure your butter and your brown sugar get nice and creamed together. Once you have your butter and brown sugar nice and combined, we are gonna go ahead and add in one egg. And then we're also going to add in approximately one teaspoon of vanilla extract. So we'll add that. And then we're gonna give this another quick mix with our blender just to make sure, or I'm sorry, our mixer, just to make sure that everything is nice and incorporated. It's already looking delicious. So get your egg and your vanilla nice and incorporated into your mix. And then from there, you're gonna go ahead and add in your Kodiak cake mix. So I have about one and a half cups 
of the Kodiak cake mix and you're just going to mix that in just with a spoon or a spatula and make sure that it gets nice and incorporated in with some of your wet ingredients. And while you're mixing that in, you can go ahead and also add in your one cup of oats and then get that nice and stirred in. Once you have your dough nice and combined, the last thing that we need to do is add in our chocolate chips. So what I did is I measured out 50 grams of Lily's chocolate chips. That is approximately 200 chips and that is five smart points. So that is how I determined the amount of points per cookie was by just adding all of my ingredients into the recipe builder. If you are not familiar with the recipe builder, I do have a video on my channel that walks you through step by step how to use the recipe builder. So make sure that you check that out. And there my friends is our cookie dough. I'm gonna get it all ready to scoop out and get into the oven. Once your dough is all good to go, we are gonna scoop out our cookies. So I'm using this small little scoop here. We need to get about 24 cookies. So I wanna do my best to do that so that they do remain the one smart point. So I'm just going to scoop them out Cross my fingers that I get 24 total. By doing this smaller cookie scoop, I feel like that probably is going to happen. But again, I'm gonna scoop out 24 cookies, and then these will go into the oven at 350 for nine to 11 minutes or until they are completely cooked through. So I'm gonna be a scoop and fool for a minute, and I'll be back to show you what the cookies look like and if I get 24 before they go into the oven. And voila, 24 chocolate chip cookies. And these are good size cookies. So I'm gonna pop these in the oven and I will be back to show you what our cooked cookie looks like. So here are our chocolate chip cookies. You guys, I tried these. These are so delicious. That brown sugar is amazing. I don't have any aftertaste at all. Now you could use Truvia or Splenda. You would just wanna recalculate the points. It may add an additional point. But even if that's the case, it's only two smart points per cookie. So with using the Sucrin, these cookies are one smart point a piece. So let me put one in my hand here. This is the size of the cookie. So that is a good sized cookie for only one smart point. They are cakey, they are soft and delicious. So you can't go wrong with a one smart point chocolate chip cookie. Here are my snacks that I'm gonna take to work this week. Because I have so many vegetables in both breakfast and lunch, I decided not to pair a vegetable with hummus or a dip or something uh, for the week. So instead, I'm going to make it simple. Of course, I'm going to be having a Bilt Bar per the usual that I do every single day as my morning snack. This bar right here is only three smart points. These bars are absolutely amazing. They taste like a candy bar, but they keep you full because they have 15 grams of protein and six grams of fiber. I usually keep them either in the refrigerator or freezer at work. That is my favorite way to eat them. But for three smart points, it cures that little bit of sweet tooth that you get mid morning and keeps me full until lunch. If you haven't ordered Built Bars or you weren't aware of the new code, Built Bar did give us a new discount code. It is here on the screen and I will link it down in the description box below. But you can use this code as many times as you want for either the sample box, if you haven't already ordered one, or the full size box. It will give you 10% off every single order and free shipping. So definitely go order Built Bars. They have new flavors, strawberries and cream. They've revised the vanilla cream and the raspberry cream, and they're amazing. So definitely something that is absolutely a staple in my house. I have at least two to four cases on hand at all times. And of course you can use the double chocolate here to make a three smart points more. Okay, sounds good to me. So make sure you order yourself some Built Bars. So that is my morning snack. And then I have quite a few bags of different chips in my pantry that I wanna eat up. I don't eat them very often, but I, wanna, I don't wanna waste them. So I have some of the barbecue pop chips. These are three smart points per bag. I also have the sea salt pop chips. Again, three smart points. These Ritz crisp and thins are really good. These are cream, cheese, and onion. These are delicious. And these are three smart points per bag as well. And then also I have some of the Quest protein chips in the nacho cheese. These are really good too. They literally taste like Doritos 
and this whole bag, this is a good size bag, is only three smart points. So this is actually a 1.1 ounce bag of chips versus a 0.8 ounce bag of pop chips and a 0.75 ounce bag of Ritz. So for the same smart points, Quest is a bargain for your points. So I'm just gonna throw a bag of chips for each day into my lunchbox. And there you have it, my snacks for this upcoming week. Thank you for joining me on another weekly WW meal prep. I hope that you enjoyed all three of the amazing recipes that I shared with you today. Everything is so good. I am so looking forward to my breakfast, my lunch, and then those cookies. Those cookies, you guys. Did you ever think that you could have a one-point chocolate chip cookie? A protein chocolate chip cookie that tastes amazing. Well, you can. Just follow the recipe along with the other two that will be linked down in the description box below. So if you're new to my channel, I'd like to extend a warm welcome. We have Meal Prep Monday every single week. So stay tuned, scroll down through all my other videos that I've uploaded over the last few months, and you will find an array of meal preps if you're looking for some really great ideas. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the notification bell, that way you're notified each and every time I upload a new video. Comment down below, let me know, are you gonna make the cookies? Are you gonna take my lunch or my re breakfast recipe? What are your plans for all the deliciousness that I shared with you on this week's meal prep? And of course, have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.